Psalm 114 is a call to praise for our wonderful, intervening God. This psalm is celebrating the praises of God for what he had done in delivering his people from Egyptian bondage, conducting them through the wilderness, and delivering them into the promised land. Everything is personified to Israel, and everything recognizes the presence and the power of the Most High. The author of the psalm is unknown, neither can the occasion on which it was composed be determined, but, it is especially appropriate for the Jewish people to use these Hallel Psalms on the occasion of their great mnemonic festivals, few things could be more proper than to keep these events of their history before the minds of the people. You may ask, why is it important to today's Christian? In its content, we will find many prophetic, parallel equivalencies between Israel being delivered from their Egyptian bondage, and the church is delivered from the dark domain where we were born into and held as slaves to sin. God's desire is for us to be guided through the water as Israel was and arrive safely in the kingdom of light. Compilers note, the water on this side of the cross is metaphorical for the baptism of repentance as we are washed in the water of the word. Ephesians 5 25-26 Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her 26 to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. HCSB here we will see some clear and cognitive parallels written about in this psalm that metaphorically applies with a much more astounding wonder than Israel's delivery. It begins with our redemption through Christ, as he frees us from the slavery of sin and transports us out of the dark domain and into his kingdom. Along the way, like ancient Israel, we may stumble on demonically dug potholes that Satan has strategically placed along the narrow path that leads to our salvation. Even though Christ came to humanity for the purpose of paying the penalty due for sin on behalf of the willing believers, in effect, he also redeems us from the power of temptation and satanic traps that the minions of Satan use to keep us separated and detour us off of the godly path. He also uses the unwitting devil as a tool to forge us. Jesus sits as a smelter, removing the dross from our minds and the waste from our lives, and like a good smelter, he knows the silver is made pure when he can see his reflection in the molten metal. As God's adopted children there is no sea nor river so wide that God cannot separate and keep open a safe passage through the deep turmoil of life. Historically, as the Jews praised God for their history, we must think of the trenches that Satan has dug to prevent the gospel from being heard and established throughout the sin-darkened world. What an awesome supernatural force is our God, he can block the torrent river, stemming from the sins of the flesh or the lusting of our flesh-trained minds and work through his spirit of grace, in the heart of the redeemed, removing the dross in our lives. What a power it is that can turn the deviant flow of an unregenerate soul toward righteousness. What a power that blocks the lusts of the eyes and the surety of corruption from the pride of life that is being dumped regularly to block our path. It is in the presence of God's spirit, Elohim's power over all things that sweeps clean the road ahead. The born-again person must keep our eyes on Jesus and not look back.